We're going to start with piecewise functions now. Um, and a piecewise function is in its simplest terms, just a function that has several pieces. Okay, and the piece that you use on the function depends on what you're plugging into the function. So the equation or the piece of the piecewise function that you use will depend on what you're plugging in to the function. So, for example, if I have f of x equals, let's say, x minus 1 if x is less than 0, 3 if x equals 0, and x squared if x is greater than 0. So you see this function has three different pieces. So this is a piecewise function. Now the way that you can tell which one of these equations or which one of these pieces that we are going to use will depend on what you are plugging in. So for example, if I want to find f of 3, that means I want to plug a 3 in to this function. So you come over here and look at the conditions. These, over, these, these things right here to the side, these are conditions. These will tell you which equation to use. So is 3 less than 0, is 3 equal to 0, or is 3 greater than 0? And we know 3 is greater than 0. So since 3 is greater than 0, we use this bottom equation. So I want to take this bottom equation, and I want to plug a 3 in. So that would be 3 squared, or 9. All right. So let's find f of negative 2. Again, depends on what you're plugging in. It doesn't depend on what you get out because you wouldn't know which equation to use. So the one that you use will be the one where the condition is met for x equals negative 2. So is negative 2 less than 0, equal to 0, or greater than 0? Of course, we all know negative 2 is less than 0. Okay, so use the top equation. So plug in a negative 2 into the top equation. So negative 2 minus 1, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Alright, let's do one more on this same function. f of 0. Now for this piecewise function, when x equals 0, the function is just equal to 3. If x equals 0, I just have 3. So f of 0, there's nothing to plug a 0 in for. The answer is just 3. Okay, And piecewise functions could have graphs too. It's just if we plug in a negative number, a negative x, we would want to use this equation. When we plug in 0, we'll just have one point at y equals 3. And then when x is greater than 0, we would have the equation x squared to graph. So you can graph a piecewise function. It looks a little different. Um, I'll just give you a rough sketch of what it would look like. This is, like I said, it's just a real rough sketch. Um, so, so at 
zero, it's equal to three. And so that's going to be a shaded in circle there. And then, let's see, at negative one on the X, that would be negative two on the Y. Okay. Right here, when you get really close to zero, this is really close to negative one, so there's an open circle here. Okay. And then this one right here, or this last equation, when you get here really close to zero, this one is zero, and then as you increase, this goes up really fast. So, so it looks a little strange, but you can graph a piecewise function. There's no hole. There's really no holes in the graph, even though you see an open circle here and here, because when you're at zero, you're at y equals three. So, now I'm not gonna make you graph any of those on your test. You may have to do one on your homework or at least look at a graph and be able to tell what it is. But uh, let's look at one more of those. Alright, so let's say that we had this function here called c of t. And this function is going to stand for cost. Alright. And c of t is equal to 20 if t is greater than or equal to 0 less than or equal to 60 and 20 plus 0 0.40 times t minus 60 if t is greater than 60. All right, and so this is actually a real-world application where, um, you know, all of you have seen those real cheap phones you can get, say, like at Walmart, and uh, have to pay like $20 a month, or if you even go to one of the, uh, the big cellular stores or cellular providers, usually you could get a phone with like just a couple minutes, maybe like this one. This would mean, say, $20 a month as long as your time was between zero minutes and 60 minutes. But if you use the phone more than those, those few minutes you have, those 60 minutes, then they start charging you. Uh, this would be 40 cents per extra minute that you went over 60. Okay, so, um, 40 cents a minute is pretty expensive, so if you were going to use your phone a lot, you definitely would not want this plan. But for somebody that doesn't use a cell phone much, or uh, maybe they just wanted an uh, extra cell phone to keep in their car for emergency situations, then this would be the perfect plan. $20, as long as T, your time, is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to 60 minutes, but then if you use more than 60 minutes, they start charging you big time. Okay, so that's what this piecewise function represents. All right, so let's figure out the cost of this plan if we wanted to use the phone 40 minutes or we used the phone 40 minutes in one month and then the next month we used the phone 80 minutes. Okay. So 
let's think about what we need to do. Remember, which equation that we use depends on the conditions over to the side. And that will, will depend on what we're plugging in. So piecewise functions is what you're plugging in tells you which equation to use. So C of 40, that means that we used our phone 40 minutes. So T equals 40 in this. So let's look up here. If T is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 60, use the top equation. And so 40 does fall between 0 and 60. So we need to use the top equation. Well, there's nothing to plug in. There's no variable here in the top equation. So if we use the phone 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, even up to 60 minutes, the phone plan costs the same. It costs $20. So C of 40 is equal to 20. Let's say this next month we use the phone 80 minutes. All right, let's see which equation we would use. Well, the top equation is used if t is between and or equal to 0 and 60 minutes. The bottom equation is used if t is greater than 60 minutes. Okay, so we actually do have an equation with a variable in it if the phone is used more than 60 minutes. So c of 80 is going to be 20 plus 0 0.40 times now plug in the 80. 80 minus 60. So 20 plus 0 0.40 times 20. Or 20 plus, alright, that's going to be multiply 20 times 0 0.40 and you should get 8. So if we use 80 minutes of our phone that would cost $28. Now let's let's get a little uh, I guess a little more real with this cell phone plan. Let's say that that you had this cell phone plan um, and every minute you use the phone or every text you sent counted as one minute. And whoever got you this cell phone plan, and maybe it was you, figured that this would be a good deal, but I'd be willing to bet between texts and the minutes used on the phone, your phone would probably be about 800 minutes just because you don't realize how many text messages you send and how much you actually use the phone. And it would probably be more than that, but let's just say it was 800 minutes. So that means that we'd, be, we'd need to find C of 800. This is just another example. Well, since 800 is most definitely greater than 60, we have to use this bottom equation. Alright, so that would be 20 plus 0 0.40 times 800 minus 60 which would be 20 plus 0 0.40 times 720 I'm sorry not 720 740 alright so I'm gonna punch that in the calculator and see Woo. Yeah, we, we'd definitely be taking that phone back or somebody would be turning our phone bill off because uh, our phone bill for this month would be $316. So we would not want that phone plan if we were going to use it for lots of calls and text messages and such.
So let's take a look at the difference quotient. The difference quotient of a function is going to um, give us the rate of change of a function. And depending on what function we're looking at, our answer may just be a number if it's a really simple function, or our answer may be another function that we get out. Okay? The formula that we use for the difference quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h where h cannot be equal to zero you may be wondering well, where does this h come from and what does it mean it's just another variable here and uh, what it actually is is the amount that we're change that we can change x so we're changing x by some small amount subtracting the original function and dividing by h okay and so what our goal usually is when trying to figure out the difference quotient is plugging in the two things into our formula in the numerator that's asked for and then simplifying somehow and getting rid of the h okay and so we need two things we need f of x plus h and we need our original function f of x and we, when we plug in our original function you need to make sure that you don't forget that you're subtracting it so whatever you plug in right here whether it's one term uh, you know that would be okay but if it's two terms three terms four terms something like that then you need to put it in parentheses because you're subtracting it you know, even if it's one term and it's negative, you need to make sure you put it in parentheses so you'll remember to change the sign. Okay, so let's work out a problem using the difference quotient. Let's say that f of x is equal to 2x plus 5. The first thing that you need to do is you need to find f of x plus h. All right, so we're going to take that function, f of x, and we're going to plug in an x plus h in parentheses for every x. All right, so I'm going to take this right here, this expression, and I'm going to plug it into f for every x. And when I plug it in, I'm going to put it in parentheses. So I'm taking this part right here, and I'm plugging it in right there. So this is f, I'm sorry, this is 2 times x plus h plus 5. All right, so this is 2x plus 2h plus 5. Now we just solved or found f of x plus h. And this part here that I have highlighted, we're going to plug in right here in our formula. Now also in our formula is minus f of x. So f of x, this right here, we're going to plug in right here. And we're going to put it in parentheses because there's a minus there. All right, I'm going to write it here to the side. So 2x plus 2h plus 5. That was my f of x plus h. Then minus f of x is 2x plus 5. So minus 2x plus 5 all over h. 
And so what our goal here is to do any type of algebra that we can so that we can cancel the H out in the denominator. Okay, so let's distribute this negative sign and I have 2x plus 2h plus 5 minus 2x minus 5 all over h. All right, now notice that if I look at for like terms, I have a positive 2x and a negative 2x. Those cancel out. I have a positive 5 and a negative 5. Those cancel out. And I'm just left with what? 2h over h. And so now I can cancel the h's out and I'm just left with 2. So the rate of change of the function 2x plus 5 is 2. Let's look at a little tougher uh, function. Let's say that I had f of x equals 3x squared plus x plus 5. Okay? And I wanted to evaluate that in the difference quotient. I want to write down the formula one more time. It's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay? So the first thing I need to do is find f of x plus h. And the way that I do that is I take and I plug in parentheses for every x, x plus h. Alright, so let's see what's going to happen. 3 times x plus h squared plus x plus h plus 5. Now, we have to follow our order of operations. We cannot multiply this 3 on the outside times everything on the inside because of this power. We have to do the power first. Exponents. Alright? And so, what does that actually mean? That means x plus h times x plus h. That's what x plus h squared means. Now there's no number in front of this parentheses and there's a plus there so I can just drop those parentheses. That's going to give me plus x plus h plus 5. Now I still have to simplify this and I can't multiply anything in yet before I multiply my binomial times my binomial. And how do I multiply those two? I fold that out, right? So multiply the first terms. x times x is x squared. Multiply the outer terms. x times h will be a 1xh. Right? x times h, they're both variables. So it's just 1xh. Then h times x, that's hx or the same thing as 1xh. And then multiply the last terms. h times h. That's going to give me h squared. Alright, so that's this thing fold out. First, outer, inner, last. And plus x plus h plus 5. Now that I have fold that, I can now distribute the number on the outside. Before I do that though, 
Notice that two of these terms in the parentheses are like terms. XH and XH are like terms. So if I put a 1XH and a 1XH together, that becomes a 2XH. So let's just pretend that I have written here just plus 2XH. So now I need to distribute this 3 to these three terms here. So that's 3x squared, and that's going to be plus 6xh, and that's going to be plus 3h squared. And then I have what? Plus x plus h plus 5. All right. So you can see if you have a quadratic, finding f of x plus h takes a little while because you have to plug in an x plus h in parentheses for every x. So now let's take what we found for f of x plus h all this right here and let's plug it in right here in my formula then I'm gonna take f of x and I'm gonna plug it in in parentheses right here with a minus in front okay so I'm gonna rewrite all this stuff one more time 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared plus x plus h plus 5 minus my original function which was 3x squared plus x plus 5 and that's all over h When you get to this step, it's important that you don't try to do something like this. Don't try to cancel that out because that doesn't work. You can't cancel things out like that. All right, you can't just cancel it out unless there's a product up top. Okay. The next thing we want to do is distribute this negative. So you want to multiply all of these terms by negative 1. So that means this first term is going to become what? Negative 3x squared. And this is going to be negative 1x. And this is going to be minus 5. Alright, if I distribute that negative to everything, then I can make this a plus. Alright, now here's something that's always going to happen as long as you have a function that doesn't have any fractions or something like that. Whatever you have here after you've distributed it is going to cancel stuff out here. That's just the way that it works. Okay, so I have a positive 3x squared, a negative 3x squared. I have a plus x and a minus x. I have a plus 5 and a minus 5. So all of those are always going to cancel out some stuff over here. That leaves me with 6x h plus 3 h squared. All right, that's my numerator. My denominator is h. Now again, do not try to cancel out like this. Don't try to do that because you have to have a product up top in the numerator to cancel out. So since they both have an h, we're going to be able to factor an h out. So this has an h to the first and this has an h squared. I forgot the other h. I did. Plus h. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. This little term right here does matter. And don't try to do this. Don't try to cancel out like this. Because 
if you do, you know, it'll, it'll be wrong. You, don't, you can't cancel out like that. You have to have a product. So all three of these terms then have an H. So let's factor an H out of the numerator and see what that leaves us with. We'll have 6X plus 3H plus 1. Now that I have a product in the numerator, I can cancel the H's out, and my answer is 6x plus 3h plus 1. It, it's kind of a strange answer because it has an H in it, and we really don't know what H is, but that would be the answer. That's the difference quotient. That's the rate of change of the quadratic. All right, so you take a minute and see if you can do one. All right, let's say that we had the function negative Two x squared plus three x minus five. All right, and we want to find the difference quotient of f. That's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So first, start working on f of x plus h. I'll give you a few minutes to do that. So I'm going to work out f of x plus h now, just in, and then stop there. Make sure you have the right f of x plus h. Make sure I get it right. So plug x plus h in in parentheses for every x. And make sure you put that square there. Still, I'm just going to, we've already done that, so I'm just going to write down what it was equal to. Now we distribute a negative 2. There's f of x plus h. So now plug that in your formula. See if you can get things to cancel out. Okay, so I'm going to plug all this in the formula now. So it's negative 2 x squared minus 4 xh minus 2 h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 5 and now I'm subtracting the original function so it's minus and then in parentheses negative 2 x squared plus 3 x minus 5 and that's all over h alright so now distribute the negative or the negative one that's on the outside to everything on the inside. When you do that, that's going to make this a plus, it's going to make this a minus, it's going to make this a plus. After you've distributed those, then you could make that a plus in the front. After you've distributed that negative one to everything. Now this is where stuff should cancel out. So I have a negative 2x squared and a positive 2x squared. I have a plus 3x and a minus 3x. I have a minus 5 and a plus 5. 
All right, so let's write everything that's left down. So in the numerator, I have negative 4xh minus 2h squared plus 3h all over h. All right, so now I need to figure out a way to get rid of this h. Well, all three of these terms have an h to some power in them. So I can factor an h out of all three of the terms in the numerator. That'll leave me with negative 4x minus 2h plus 3 all over h. Alright, so now the h's cancel out, and that leaves you with negative 4x minus 2h plus 3.